Hi guys, this is the Michael Myers Fanatic back with another video. I finally saw Orphan First Kill and I know that sounds crazy and I loved it. It was released on August 19th of 2022 and it stars Isabel Furman as Esther Albright aka Lena and Julia Stiles as Trisha Albright. The movie was really good. It is a prequel to the 2009 movie Orphan. It starts off in January of 2007 where Lena aka Esther is at a psychiatric facility in Estonia. Um, not quite sure where that is but I think it's somewhere near Russia or R Romania or something like that. She kills a couple of people and she escapes. Um, it's sort of like Halloween, you know, with the whole mental patient killing people in the asylum and escaping. And then she goes to America where she gets adopted by this family, the Albright family, and they're rich. And um, I, I think the father is an artist. So... A lot of it is, you know, rehashed shit from the first one. I still think it was good. I think Isabel Furman did a great job in this movie. She did good in the first one, but this one was even better. I like the scene where she's talking to her stepbrother, foster brother, whatever it is. And she tells him to go fuck himself. I thought that was so awesome. And they mention Lizzie Borden because her brother makes fun of her. And he says she's dressed like Lizzie Borden. And Esther's like, who's Lizzie Borden? And I like the fact that they put that true crime thing in there. This was supposed to be 2007. And... True crime, yeah, don't get me wrong, true crime was big, but it was not nearly as big as it is now. Like, now true crime is fucking huge. It's all over the place, but it was not nearly as big in 2007 as it is in 2023, so that's the only plot hole that I could see so far. Um, other than that, I like that they put the whole true crime thing in there. This movie was directed by William Brent Bell. Bro, you did a fucking awesome job with this movie. Sorry about the profanity. I'm just so excited. Isabel Furman did a great job. I met her during a press junket, and we only got to talk for six minutes. She was professional. You know, she she basically did her job. I would love to interview her again and say, hey, you did a great job with this movie. I loved her performance as Esther. I thought Esther was just going to be a killing machine. I thought it was just going to be straight up kills, straight up violence. But it wasn't, you know, it showed that Esther aka lena did have feelings you know she was just crazy as shit she was crazy as all hell i like how she fed the mouse because they had a mouse where she lived in her adopted family's house and she would feed it and shit like that well not feed it but she only fed it one time but she would play with it and then she fed it it died because Trisha poisoned the food. And that's another thing. This movie was really good, but it had way too many twists and turns for me. I say that because when you have a movie with so many twists and turns, it's kind of hard to follow, you know? Um, so we find out in the movie that the real Esther died a long time ago, four years ago. So I guess it's not really that long ago, but still, she died four years ago. And as far as Alan is concerned, she's just missing. But we find out that her brother killed her 
And I think it was accidental, but from the way he told it to Esther, a.k.a. Lena, he made it sound like he did the shit on purpose. Like, oh, I killed my sister. And I'm like, bro, why are you bragging about it? You like you're bragging about killing your sister and shit. That's weird as hell. I don't know. And I, I guess Gunner and Trisha just kept it secret that Esther was really dead. And as a matter of fact, she's buried at the bottom of their well. So that's kind of weird. Like, I don't know if I could have one of my relatives buried near the house. That would just be weird. But anyway, we find out that when the detective finds out who Lena, AKA Esther really is, she discovers that he knows who she is. So she goes to his house, tries to kill him, and she nearly kills him. But then Trisha finishes the job. And then that's when Trisha tells Esther, okay, you're going to play along because your father, th I mean, yeah, your father thinks you're the real Esther. And this is what I'm talking about with the twists and turns. They make this little deal that um, Lena is going to pretend to be Esther so Alan doesn't get suspicious. I'm guessing Gunner killed the real Esther and hid her body and her mom covered it up because she didn't want to lose Esther and Gunner which is really fucked up like what kind of family is that rich people are fucking weird seriously but anyway they have this little alliance but that doesn't last long because just like in the first orphan movie, uh, like the kid, what, what what was the kid's name? Daniel or some shit like that in the first movie? Just like Daniel did, um, Gunner starts uh, fucking with Esther about her race. You know, about how she's not an American. And that's the same thing they did in the original. Why do they keep bringing up her race? But the one thing I will say about this movie that I loved is that a lot of the times people were afraid of Esther. And in this movie, they weren't scared of her. You know what I mean? Like in the first one, people were scared of her and shit like that. Even in this one, people were scared of her somewhat. But the Albright family wasn't scared of her. The mom wasn't scared of her. And the brother wasn't scared of her. They were going toe to toe with her. I like that. I like when people stand up to the villain. You know, they sort of did the same thing with Michael Myers in Halloween Resurrection. And Rick Rosenthal pointed that out that they weren't afraid of Michael in Resurrection. And they did the same thing with this. I really like when the good guys stand up to the villain and they tell the villain, I'm not going to take any more of your shit. And that's what they did with this movie. They just weren't afraid of her. And I like how they fought to the death, literally. The only thing that doesn't quite make sense is that if this is supposed to be a prequel, then that means Esther is already dead because she died in the first one. So if she's already dead, then what was the point of having her escape in this movie? You know what I mean? Unless they're going to show her with another family or whatever, and then have her kill that family, and then have her get to Vera Formiga's family. I think that's her name. Other than that, I don't know, but I don't understand why would why they would let her escape if she's technically already dead because this is a prequel. So that means she already died in the first one. So 
they should have just made this a sequel or what they could have done is have this be a prequel and a sequel and they could reveal that she's actually alive and show that she lived even though she had a broken neck you know because you can live with a broken neck so they could have done something like that and that's what I thought they were going to do. But they didn't allude to the fact that she was alive in the first one. Or still alive, I should say. But when I went on IMDB, and some people say that IMDB is not a credible source. But IMDB said that they were doing an Orphan 3. So maybe we might get an actual sequel. And by the way, back to the actual movie review. So the movie ends basically with her killing Gunner by shooting him with the bow and arrow and stabbing him several times. And then she fights Trisha to the death while trapped on a roof, you know, and the house is burning. And the father, Mr. Albright, tries to save his wife and save Esther at the same time. And his wife ends up falling to her death and he saves Esther. But then when he saves her, he realizes that she's really a grown up because her fake teeth fall out. He dies because she kills him, obviously. She knows she can't let him live. So then she escapes. And I'm like, yeah, but what's she going to do now? What's the point? Like I keep saying, what's the point of having her escape if technically she's already dead? Because in this movie, they're only showing you how she became quote unquote Esther. So I don't understand why they would let her escape and make it look like there's going to be another one when she's already dead, unless you're just going to have her, like I said, you're going to have her go to another family and then kill that family. And then you can bring in Vera Formiga's family. That's the only way I can see them doing that. But other than that, I liked the movie. I liked it a lot. I thought Isabel Furman was great. Like I said, I liked how they made it so that they weren't afraid of her. Um, I don't understand the whole racist thing where they keep bringing up the fact that she's not from this country. This is the second time they did that. Um, they, you know, they had the little kid do it in the first one. Oh, yeah. And then she also threatened to cut off somebody's balls in this movie. And I'm like, what is it with her and cutting off people's genitals? Like, what the what the fuck is up with that? Like, I don't know what's going on with that because she said the same thing to the little boy in the first one, you know? And I even asked Isabel Furman about that when I met her during the press junket. I'm like, what the fuck is it with cutting off people's penises and shit? Like, what, what's, what's going on with that? You know, that's a little weird, but... And she just laughed. They, they rehashed a lot of the same shit from the first one. But other than that, I liked it a lot. As a matter of fact, I loved it. It was different. It wasn't just a slasher movie like I thought it was going to be. Um, Wikipedia says that it had mixed reviews. And I say mixed reviews, my ass. I loved the movie. I thought it was great. I thought Isabel Furman outdid herself. She was great. I hope they do make another orphan movie. I could watch a whole franchise of these movies because she's fucking awesome as Esther. So, um, 
I enjoyed the movie Orphan First Kill. It was released August 19th, 2022. I didn't get to see it till now, unfortunately. But I did get to meet Isabel Furman on August 3rd of 2022. Um, you can see that interview on the channel. You know, she was nice during the interview. She was cordial. Um, we didn't really get to talk a whole lot. Hopefully I can interview her again and tell her how awesome she was in this movie. But anyway, guys, that's my review. Thank you for listening. I'm the Michael Myers fanatic. I approve this message. Please be sure to follow me on all forms of social media at the Myers Fan 25 and hit the notification bell so you don't miss an upload. Thank you for watching.